da 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 so where does that bring us? Well, that brings us eventually to the 80s, the 1980s. And Saturday morning, morning cartoons evolved uh, from being these very, very short stories that didn't have really a story at all. It was just the same thing happening again and again, just, with, just in different ways, <laughs> which, was which is fine. You know, when you're seven years old, this is fine. But eventually, uh, American cartoons got a little more complicated. They had a plot. A plot is a story that has a beginning and an end. And also, the stories took, took longer. So if a, if a Hannah, if a, if a, if Laugh Olympics, if Hannah Barbera was a five minute cartoon, Eventually, cartoons would be 30 minutes. So if a cartoon time was 30 minutes, you would usually have four, three or four or five little cartoon stories. But now we have one cartoon story. Every Saturday morning episode was its own story. And for a kid, this was huge. Only grown-ups watch TV that had a story that was the whole half hour or the whole hour. But now the kids had cartoons that also did the same thing. So we have the Super Friends. The Super Friends were great because it was our favorite superheroes. Here we have Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. And every week they would have their own adventures with their, t with their friends, basically a super team. Think of like the Avengers, right? And... They, they would go on every week was a different a different uh, problem for them to solve. And another thing is cartoons were always supposed to be funny. But the super friends sometimes weren't funny. They were kind of serious. Not not sad serious, but like dramatic. And this was cool. Okay. And and then the other was the Smurfs. The Smurfs also had a story. Something happened in Smurf Town, in the forest of the Smurfs, among the Smurf people. And there were relationships. Um, there, were, there were good and bad Smurfs who would sometimes change as people. That was for a kid. That's huge. That's, they're trying to be, they're beginning to understand people. And they're watching Smurfs, these little blue people do the same things that they see other people do in real life. This is quite, quite a powerful thing to happen. I want to talk a little bit about He-Man. Okay, so He-Man was huge in the 80s. Now, how can I explain He-Man? In the world of He-Man, it takes place in the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, where, where you had barbarians and warriors who fought with swords and bows and arrows. And you had wizards who used magic and people lived in castles. But in the He-Man universe, there was also spaceships and laser guns. <laughs> eh, anyway, and, and then the other thing is, oh, okay, in He-Man... There were superheroes, but not like Superman or Batman, but like Middle Ages barbarian superheroes. So the main the main hero of He-Man is a guy named He-Man, okay, <laughs> and and he's a barbarian, and and his superpower is he can change from being a one kind of barbarian to another barbarian, and the only thing that changes is his clothes. So, so in the cartoon, when he wears his everyday clothes, everyone knows him as Clark Kent. That's not his name. I just can't remember his, uh, his He-Man name. But, but when he needs to fight the bad guys, he says these magic words and he transforms into himself. But now he's wearing different clothes. 
and nobody can recognize him. They only know him as a superhero. What? You're Superman. It's the same guy, but he's just wearing a different shirt. But anyway. Uh, but the thing that made this interesting is this was the first time I saw toys. Uh, He-Man was one of the first cartoons that also sold toys and clothes and backpacks and lunch boxes and all sorts of merchandise stuff. And as soon as they did that, every cartoon after did the same thing. So all cartoons were just kind of a commercial. Hey, kids, buy this cool toy that's connected to the Super Friends or buy this cool backpack that's connected to He-Man. Buy this cool, these cool shoes that look just like your character's favorite shoes. So it's all tied into merchandising. That became a huge thing in the 80s. And I started to get a little old for cartoons. So what happens when kids get a little too old for cartoons? Well, they stop watching cartoons. And what do the uh, animation studios do? Well, they, they start developing cartoons for a specific audience. They start making cartoons for specific kinds of kids. For example, we have She-Ra, which takes the same idea as He-Man, but made it for young girls, but not like but not like little girls, but girls the same age as the boys who watch He-Man. But now the girls have something they can watch and they can understand. Oh, this is this is a, a woman doing hero things, and they can relate to that. Rainbow Bright, Rainbow Bright is part of again a toy toy series for very very little kids. But Rainbow Bright, these stories happened, these cartoons, not stories, but these cartoons happened about the same time as the other cartoons. So while kids' older brothers and sisters watched Super Friends or She-Ra, they could watch their own cartoon that was in the same time area. So little, little, little kids could watch Rainbow Bright or the Snorks with their and their big brothers and sisters might might be with them, might be watching with them, because they're waiting for their cartoon to start eventually. So it's a way for the, all the, the children to watch together, which is great marketing. Now, the other cartoon, Scooby-Doo, again, it's this cartoon where every week there's a different adventure. So the stories are not, remember, the stories are not five minute long stories anymore that are very, very simple. Every story is the same, right? They, again, these stories, these cartoons have changed. So Scooby-Doo Adventures follows this, this dog. He can't talk, but he, he can kind of talk to his friend and his friend will translate. But anyway, the point is Scooby-Doo follows the adventure of a dog and his friends chasing after mysteries, unexplained mysteries all over America in a, in a van. And every week was a different mystery. And some of them were funny, but usually they were a little scary, a little bit scary, because some of the mysteries were, were, took place in a haunted house. They involved a ghost, sometimes a monster. But at the end of every episode, we learned that the haunted house actually wasn't very haunted. It was just a regular house, and some crazy guy put some traps in there to, to make trouble for the kids. And it wasn't a real ghost. Actually, it was some dude wearing a costume trying to frighten the kids in his neighborhood. So they tried to make it real safe. Scooby-Doo. Um, so what happens to, to Jack Detroit in this time? Well, he's starting to get really old. You know, he's, he's too old to watch uh, cartoons. 